every show has two dogs or two cats or two rats because just like the humans, in case one were to become ill, we'd have to have a backup. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill Berloni, theatrical animal trainer. We actually teach the actors who are interacting with the dogs to be professional handlers. So we train the actors how to handle them, how to correct them, how to reward them, and also what to do if they make a mistake. Just like any other part of the theatrical magic that we make, we want things to happen that the audience may not be aware of how it's done. And so we create hand signals or phrases that mean something to the animals, but the audience doesn't recognize they're being cued. In Legally Blonde, Bruiser comes out and has a conversation with one of the actresses. That's how the show opens. And so, you know, how we cue him is part of the fun what you have to come and see to figure out. Now, there are times when they don't get the right cue, where an actor flubs a line or a hand signal. So they will get the wrong cue and they'll look off stage at us to say, what do we do now? And so, you know, that's when the audience laughs. They're creatures of habit. And so as long as their pattern is the same, they're very consistent. I get these animals, I train them in my backyard, and they learn to do it in my backyard. Then I bring them to a rehearsal studio here in New York City, and they learn to do it in a rehearsal studio. And each step, we're layering on the different things they're going to have to deal with. You know, the tech rehearsal is the most stressful because we're putting the lights, the scenery, the music, and we acclimate them to that. But I can't bring in 1,200 people and simulate applause, so that first performance you know, hopefully the animals are so into what the pattern and they feel secure that they ignore that noise. Oh my God! Now, there are many times on stage where he has to stay in one spot. And it would seem odd to me if the audience saw an actor have to put a dog down and go, stay, that would tip off the fact that some behavior was happening. So very simply, I just created a hand signal where when you pet his eyes, that means stay. So to the audience, it looks like Elle Woods is petting her dog, but she's actually given him a command not to move. Another way that we give dogs cues is using the lines from the play. In Legally Blonde, when Elle Woods is getting ready to leave her dorm room, she's putting on her coat, and the director wanted an indication that Rip Bruiser was getting ready to leave too. So she says a line at that moment, white shoes after Labor Day. And to Bruiser, that means go to your bag, turn around and sit down. And of course, a very important thing that every good actor needs to know is how to bow. There are certain things that you can expect an animal to do. Can I train a dog to do a flip? Yes. Can it do it eight times a week in a Broadway show? No. And so very early on with the directors and the writers, I find out what their intent is and then turn it into something that can be done reasonably eight times a week over the possibility of like Annie for seven years. Right after I graduated high school, I went to work at the Goodspeed Opera House as a technical apprentice. My second season there, we were doing um, a season which included two revivals and a new musical, and the new musical needed a dog. I remember one day in 1976 being called into Michael's office, the producer, and he said, Bill, how would you like your equity card and a part in one of the shows? All you have to do is find and train a dog for us for no money. So I went on a casting search in the local shelters where I found a dog who fit the description of the dog we needed in the play. And that dog was the original Sandy, and that musical was the original production of Annie. The show closed because it didn't do very well in its original conception. I moved to New York City, I enrolled in NYU, and I was studying acting with Stella Adler, the famous acting coach, when all of a sudden I got a call from Mike Nichols' office who said he was producing Annie for Broadway. Would I be interested in working on it? Well, we opened in Washington, D.C., and six months later, when Annie opened in 1977 on Broadway, I became a world-famous animal trainer. Over my 32-year career, I've adopted hundreds of dogs and cats and have become a strong proponent for animal rights. But why shelter dogs? The simple answer is, why not? They are just as smart and just as deserving as any other pet. And I think to, to use the theater to help change people's attitudes is one of the things that I got into this business to do. It takes them a while to get into the rhythm and to get the actors into a rhythm. And so usually I'll stay with the show for about two to four weeks just to make sure that everybody's smoothed out. And once I know that everybody knows what they're doing, I can move on to the next show. Thank you.